Holy sh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another micro plugin fucking episode. And today we're going to be discussing something that you guys requested multiple times. And I'm like, I gotta buy a trampoline for that one to pump myself up so I can focus better. That's the trick if you want to make great micro plugins. Get a trampoline. I'm just kidding. Welcome to this video about regions. So I'm going to be teaching you, and this may take me one, two, or three videos because this is a bigger topic on how to place two regions points inside your world and how to basically do region manipulation so that you can make a mini game plugin you can make a claims plugin right and then if i exit this out i can't really do anything within this region because it is protected so you can see i can't uh, place any blocks within it and okay that should not happen okay i'm gonna make a cut there's a bug that will definitely not happen uh, for you this video will be pretty advanced because you need to have java skills already if you don't have any you can type in full java 12 hour long goddamn tutorial on youtube and there's a bunch of them and if you want to skip that time you can enroll in my course called project orient which includes a full java mini course which has been designed specifically to give you the fastest possible uh, knowledge to make Minecraft play. So the choice is up to you. Now, the way the system is going to work is very simple. We're going to be having a primary region point and a secondary region point, okay? And I'm going to be having a command that creates these two points where I'm standing, so quite easy. And then I'm going to be having an event listening to a player breaking a block, and we're going to be checking if these two points, they're going to basically create a cuboid location, just like this one. And I know this is an awful illustration, but basically if this little block right here happens to be inside the region, boom, the event will be canceled. So throughout this entire YouTube playlist, through all of these videos, we are making a plugin called Cowcanoon, which just contains a lot of features that I'm teaching. Today, I'm going to be taking its code and creating a new class in it called Regions in the model package, which is going to basically hold the configuration written on the disk with all the regions and all the helper methods we need. First of all, I'm going to be making sure this class is final so I don't accidentally extend it, as well as making this a singleton. There we go. That's how a singleton works. It's basically just a new instance of your class with a private constructor so that you cannot accidentally call new regions from anywhere in your plugin. Now, we also need two things right here. We need a way to load and save configuration. So we're going to need a file from java.io as well as yaml configuration config field which will actually hold uh, the ways to operate on this file and we're going to be calling this to uh, save and load regions from it so the file is going to residue in something called a data folder which is a method accessible in the main plugins class and uh, if you're following this tutorial then you know that i did make a public uh, get instance here which calls get plugin which is a method found inside the uh, java plugin itself and yeah, and this one is made by Bucket API itself. And then the way this works is basically get data folder refers to the Kaukanoon folder inside my plugins folder. If I open it, I want to have regions.yml right here. So regions.yml. And then config is just going to take in new YAML configuration. Now, there's a class called cow settings, and that class also comes with a full video that I made earlier. So I'm not going to cover everything when it comes to making these settings. But what I can do is I can just copy, load, save, and probably even set from this class. And I can just paste it right here. Again, guys, I don't like copy paste, but for the sake of simplicity, I already made a video like that. And I see that I'm using file without this. So when it comes to coding standards, uh, for the sake of being consistent, I'd have to delete it from here as well. All right, guys. So when it comes to the loading mechanism, we already have the file. Now, when the file doesn't exist, we can just call, yeah, save resource, except that we're going to be need needing to save the regions.yaml, which actually can be empty. So this one can just be create a new file. And this one, I think it's going to throw, yeah, it'll throw right here. So actually, you know what? I can actually just rework this and... There we have it, catch an entire uh, throwable like this one. And then basically if the file doesn't exist, we're going to be created and then config we already have. We're going to be also parsing comments. Although you don't really need that because the, the region file is not meant to be edited by players. So all we have to do is just load it like this. And then here, what we can do 
we can basically just create a new set of regions. Now we don't have this class. This is going to be custom class. I think this is the highest coding practice. I've seen people do crazy, crazy shit like pasting a hash map there and then having a hash map within a hash map within a hash map. And uh, obviously you don't want to skip, you know, torture yourself with this. So we're going to be having a custom region class. And I'll explain that in a minute what this will do. This will basically just store the uh, name of the region and then the uh, the primary location and then the secondary location. So three variables for now, that's enough. And make sure to import hash set from Java util package, just like that. And then what we can do, we can just write in a to-do list because we're going to be loading the regions a little bit later. When it comes to saving it, there we go. We can just hit this save right here. And when it comes to setting it, so actually this one will also be commented out. There's going to be a to-do save uh, region. And there's also going to be one for get region at a specific location. Also, this is the class that I'm going to be creating. I'm not using Lombok. If I were to use Lombok, I literally can get rid of this one. I can just type in data annotation right here. I may make a video on how to do that because Lombok is a massive time saver. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to make it this, this video. Just bear with me, have this class. And then back here, now you can see that this is importing itself properly. Now, one thing that can screw some people up, the location comes from org.bucket package. There's a lot of other packages having the same class name, so make sure to import it from the right package. And then I'm going to do my favorite part. I'm going to copy someone else's code. I know, I know haters are going to be clapping and uh, figuring this out. However, I'll have to disappoint you, dear haters, because this one is actually my library code foundation. What do we have to do? We have to basically have a method inside the region class asking, hey, is this location inside this region? We don't know. How do we know? Well, if you look at the region, the box of the region, then we have two points, right? So first of all, we have to figure out which one is the lowest point, which one is the highest point. And then we can just ask, okay, is the locations Z uh, between this and this? Is the locations X between uh, this and that? Uh, the highest points X and is the location height between the lowest Y and the highest um, the highest Y. So to do that, we actually have to find the lowest and highest point first. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty math. You can just go to github.com slash kangarko slash foundation library or below this video i'm going to link to a blog post and that blog post contains the full source code of this whole cow canoon so you can also uh, find that code there so i'm just going to paste it right here and then this one works with just uh, primary instead of primary location so let me just change that and then let me rename it to location there we go that's how you refactored and there is one more method that's not going to work it's just checking whether these two positions happen to be in the same world we can just get rid of it because we're going to do that check at the command level great this is going to basically correct these points to make sure that the bottom is always uh right and then we can just scroll down and there's a lot of utility methods you can uh, inspire yourself and you can use in your own plugins you can get entities you can get a uh, bounding box you can get blocks inside your region which is really cool for many games if you want to delete monsters after the game is over however we're interested in this is within so i'm gonna copy this go below no actually go above right here and then it's within there we go i can get rid of this one i can get rid of the check right here and then i can also get rid of the world check and now we're left with pretty much um pretty much these beautiful methods we can get rid of the final as well there we go and this is going to return true if i'm standing inside a uh, location given just a very simple dumb mathematical comparison whether the x z and y coordinates are between uh, these two points in a box quite simple should be quite understandable and then my dear friends what we can do we can just create the method called find region which is going to iterate through all the regions that we have and then check if the region is within uh, the given location then we're just going to return it and again import is going to be org.bucket there we go and it's going to return like that and if there is no such region i'll just return a null so this method can return a nullable i'm not going to document it but you can do it for your own purpose there we go the last part we can actually implement the saving method it's going to look something like this save region taking in all the parameters and then simply adding it to the region like this one 
And then we can simply call this that save just like that. And I can get rid of this thing right here. And then in the above, I'll well, actually get rid, of, get rid of this one so that the code is consistent. And then inside the actual savings method. So before we write to the file, so I tried to use the buckets native system of saving objects called serialization that turned out to be a disaster. Unfortunately, bucket struggles with it still. Plus there's a bunch of compatibility issues. Long story short, when it comes to saving and loading these regions, we have to go down the custom way. And I'm going to be showing you how I implemented it right now. So first things first, the saving method, we have to basically create a list that is going to be a new map of all the strings and each string is corresponding to each field inside this region class. So name, primary, secondary, for example, and the object is the actual value. So the name has value <coughs> of a string and these two have value of a location, which by the way, location works just fine on bucket. Don't worry about that. So we have to convert that into a string. And then let me actually get rid of Lambda so you can see it a little bit better. So then I'm going to iterate through all the safe, safe regions. And then I'm going to basically call serialized method for all, uh, for every region. And then I'm going to save the list into the map. This method here, actually, I forgot this one doesn't have to implement the serialized method much at all. So I can just delete it. This method right here simply creates a new map and it will put in these three fields inside the map and return the map. Likewise, there needs to be a reverse method. They'll simply take the map and spit out the region class. So this is the method uh, you can implement, takes in a map and then simply gets these three values, uh, keys in the map and then makes a new region. This way should be quite easy to understand. So this is the saving method. Now, when it comes to loading this little monster, I'm going to first clear the old regions to support reloading. And then if we are set, if the regions are set on the disk, it's going to look something like this one. I'm going to be then basically getting a map list on that location, which works like this. It's going to return basically this whole thing. And here, basically each region is determined by a dash by this little thing. So it is technically a list and basically each key has a different value and the entire object here is a map. So that's why you can call get map list. And then I'll just make sure to use the generic types like this one. And then you can basically load each region calling the deserialize method on the raw region map that happens to be in the file. But however, you need to cast it manually to a string and an object. You can just ignore uh, the unchecked um, warning inside your console. And then don't, don't forget to go into your main class, uh, find the on enable method right here. And then you can go to the bottom, get the regions, get the instance, and then simply call load. There you have it. I also forgot to mention you're going to want to have a custom find region method that simply iterates through regions and find one but by its name. Reason for this is that in the command later, we have to check if the region already exists to prevent accidentally creating one uh, that is already there. And also make sure to have a get regions method as well as get regions names method. Both will be used in commands and I'm going to use con collections dot unmodifiable set um, as a method to convert the region set into a set which cannot be accidentally edited by you or other developers from outside of this class. Next, what do you need to do? We already have a region command. By the way, I do have a video on how to make commands in this very Minecraft development playlist, a tutorial series. So you can check that out if you've never made a command before, but I already do have a world guard video on here uh, that I made a couple of videos ago that basically um, implements this command. So I'm going to open this region command. And as you see, we already worked with regions right here that is called selections. So all I have to do is open up the safe uh, subsection of this command and then basically just comment out these lines right here. And instead of saving this to world edit, we're going to be needing to have the regions instance just like this one. I can place that on the top under the on command right here. And then I'll just call regions that save region. And the name of the region is basically going to be this thing right here. Let me just put it into a variable like this one. And then the primary position will be selection dot uh, get first and secondary will be selection dot get second. 
awesome. And then I can just copy, uh, I, I can actually just comment out the entire paste sub comment because we don't need it. And then just for fun, uh, just to show you guys around, I've made two sub comments. First one being list, which will simply list installed regions, uh, just like this, very simple, using the get region names. And the other one being current, this is going to find the region where the player is currently standing. And it's going to say you're standing in region either none, if we're standing outside of any region, or we're going to print out the name of the region uh, in which we're standing. And last part is implementing a listener. Again, I do have a full video on how to create game listeners. This one is very simple. It's called region listener, listens to whenever I break a block, gets the player, gets the region's instance, gets the region very similarly to what we're doing in the command. However, now we're simply parsing in a location right here. Well, actually that's the same as we did in the um, standing sub command. And then if I'm standing in any region whatsoever, I'll send the player a message. I've already created the Common that tell method a couple of videos ago. Basically, this one will also let you use uh, hex codes, which is pretty cool. And then it'll say cannot break blocks in protected region, and then the region's name, and then set the event cancelled. Obviously, guys, this is very basic, very bare bone. You want to take it to the next level yourself. You can implement more stuff inside the region class, such as the private final UUID region owner, and you can only let the owner, or you can have a list of all players that can access that region uh, modified. However, let's crack into the game and let's test it out. Now, before we do, I want to have, I want to head into the main plugins class, and then I want to make sure to register a listener as always new re region listener. There we have it. Let's crack into the game. Let's test it. All right, guys. Now, cracking back into the game, what I can see, first of all, we have the regions.yml file generated. It should be empty inside my plugins folder, which is great. And then in the game, I type in slash region position one, and I'm standing on top of this. And then I can simply go down somewhere right here, type in position two, and then I can hit save and I can just say house, for example. And now finally, if I break a block, there we go. It says cannot break blocks in protected region house. And for whatever reason, uh, for whatever reason, the goddamn thing is not going to work. I think, screw it. It's just going to be without colors. You guys understand. Okay, now it works great. And now it says that I can't block, uh, break blocks in the house region. This is it for this video. It's been very, very basic, yet quite advanced. I know a lot of people have requested it. Comment below what you want to learn next. I'm very happy to keep explaining more on this and take it to the next level with you guys. Comment below, let me know if you understand it, if it's clear, if it's simple, if you want to learn more, Check out Project Orion. We have a full comprehensive course about how to make Minecraft plugins, including mini games, including regions, including GUIs and 300 other topics. Plus myself included, I am there twice a week to help you guys on live Zoom calls. So you watch the videos and then you go through the training. You get stuck somewhere, you don't understand something. Twice a week, you can jump on a live coaching calls with me, unmute yourself or ch chat with me and I'll help you understand and implement this knowledge. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Take care.